Hey guys, my name's Jack, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make Minecraft thumbnails just like mine. So we're going to be doing this kind of style right here, where you've got the 3D character and then some stuff in the background and some text over the top. So the first thing you want to do is go to this website, minecraft.norwaskin.me, and then this is just the website which I use for creating my 3D characters. So this was for a hot potato thumbnail I made for someone, but all I need to do is type in my exact Minecraft username, Jack Massey Welsh, spell it correctly, you'd think I'd know how to spell my own name, but I don't, uh, and you need shout out to Ian Shepard who's just subscribed to me, and it is case sensitive, so you need to have the capital letters, and then you just press enter, and there we go, here it is, so all you need to do is click on this thing on the side, and then this will bring up your Minecraft skin. Now this website's a bit glitchy unfortunately, but uh, there's not much you can do about that. But what I'm going to do now is go to the background tab up here, and I've actually got my own little custom background, which is just a green screen, which I'll show you right here. Uh, I'll show you how to make one of these yourself if you don't know later on, but I use this, uh, I'll explain why a bit later on. So that was just by going to the background tab and then uploading my own image. So now I'm going to go to the pause tab and then this is where I've got a bunch of different little pauses. Uh, and you can just pick which one of these it is that you want in your thumbnail. Now the one I like to use a lot is this one just because I think it looks it looks pretty awesome and it looks it kind of adds well my arm my leg just moved for a second there. That's a bit weird. But you can use whichever one you want or if you want to like customize them a little bit more then you can move around all of these settings. Now these are fairly self-explanatory, you should be able to work out how to use these, so you know, head, rotate it that way, or rotate this way, you know, all these different things. Um, but to save time, uh, I am just going to use one of these default custom pauses, but you can easily work out how what to do yourself. So I'm going to use this one right here, if I can click on it. And then you've got these hold left and hold right functions, and then all you need to do is click on one of them and then this will allow you to hold a weapon. Now in this Hunger Games I didn't find a weapon. Um, I won't spoil it for you because it hasn't uploaded yet. But so I'm instead going to get myself a fishing rod I guess. Uh, there we go. So I just clicked on the fishing rod and then now I'm holding a fishing rod. However, you know what, in all honesty, I don't think I even had a fishing rod in the video so I'm going to give myself a golden apple instead. The, you see it's a, it's a little bit laggy but I think that's just because I'm rendering the very uh, video right now. So yeah, uh, what did I go on? Hold left. I'm going to give myself a golden apple if I can find where it is. There it is. Um, and I think, what kind of angle should I go for? I'm actually going to put something in my other hand as well so that's the right one. Uh, I think I had a boat in the video so I'm going to get a boat. There we go. Oh, and there's an example of the website glitching out. Um, it's gone back to the default position. But all you need to do is just click on these pauses again. And it will go back to how you want. There we go. So now I'm just going to position this into a area which I think will look good. Now I'm not sure to have it like this or like that. I'm thinking this is a good angle right here. Now the next thing you do, there's probably a much easier way to do this, but this is just my own method. What I do now is I press the print screen button on my keyboard. Then I'm going to go over to Photoshop, it doesn't matter which version you've got, because to be honest they're all basically the same. But you need to go to File, New, and then you need to make sure that the dimensions are 1280 by 720. And uh, they need to be in pixels, make sure this is all the same as mine as well. Press OK, and then this is the exact size of a thumbnail. So now what I'm going to do is just click on this, uh, the, I don't know what you call this, the, the pointer tool I guess, uh, and I'm going to press Control and V. Now what that's done is pasted my print screen. So now I just want to cut it out so that it just got my character and none of this or the background stuff. So I'm going to zoom in by pressing Control and uh, the plus key, and then I'm going to get this one here. Uh, this is called the Marquee Tool. If it's not on the square by default, you just hold it down and then you drag it over to the square. So now I'm just going to drag a square around my character. Try not to get any of the other background stuff in. So now what we're going to do is press Ctrl C and that'll copy what we've selected and then press Ctrl V and then that's pasted what we've selected. So you see we've got it over here. By the way guys, make sure you've got auto select ticked just because it makes it much easier. 
So now we're going to select our original layer and we don't need that anymore so we're going to press delete. And we've still got green and we don't want any green so the next thing I'm going to do is go to the magic wand tool and I'm going to press the green thing. Now what this has done is selected everything that's green on screen. Um, that, that rhymes lol. Um, but I don't want everything that's green, I want everything else that isn't green. So I go to select up here and I press inverse. This is now selected everything else in the picture that isn't green. And I've just realised that we have a little bit of green there, so we need to actually select that. So let's go back, and what we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift, and then now we can press that. Uh, if you don't hold down shift, then it'll unselect what you've already got selected. So anyway, uh, hopefully this is making sense. I'm not very good at these tutorials yet. So now I've pressed inverse again, and I'm going to press Control c to copy, and Control v to paste. And there we go, here I am. So I'm going to zoom out, Control minus key. And a little tip is, people, I often see people making thumbnails and their character is like this big, but they forget that when the video, when it's on YouTube, the thumbnail will be more this size, which is just far too small to be able to see things clearly. So a little top tip from the Jackster himself is, you want to just have sort of head and torso. So if I show you my thumbnails, you see I very rarely have my entire body in frame, it's usually just my head and my uh, torso because that's a decent size. So to resize my image I'm going to hold down control and press T uh, and this will give us these uh, like a border thing around and you can also rotate just like doing this but we don't really need to just yet and then what I'm going to do is hold down shift because if I don't hold down shift when I drag him bigger I'll get distorted. Uh, so I'm just going to undo that so yeah, I'm going to hold down shift and then this will keep me as my like exact dimensions but just larger, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Uh, so you see, I'm just going to move this around a bit. I'm going to go for here and then I think I'm going to rotate him slightly just so he's like that. And that kind of looks like I'm running frantically. And then once you're happy with the size, you just press enter and there we go. So the next thing that we want is a background. Now on my thumbnails I like to just use a nice little gradient type thing, uh, on most of them that is anyway, just because it stands out a lot more than when you have like something like this, although that's quite a nice looking thumbnail, it doesn't really stand out very much, unlike uh, what this one does. So yeah, what we're going to do is we are going to go to Google Images, and we're just going to type in background. It's as simple as that. You can actually just make these gradient backgrounds in Photoshop, but I'm lazy and I just find doing this quicker. So now I'm just looking for the one I want. Now this is what I want right here. So I'm going to click on it, view original image, and then I'm just going to copy it by right clicking and pressing copy image. Then we're going to press the old favorite control V to paste it in, and then we can zoom out a bit, control T to just resize it. Um, just like that. Now I'm just going to press enter and we're going to go over to our layers over here. Uh, so you see this is my face layer and this is the background. So we just want the background to be underneath that. So you just have to drag it down and then place it like that. And there we go. So it's starting to come together right now. Uh, and I think I'm actually just going to rotate this so the light is coming from directly behind me. Just because I think that will look a little bit better. Um, how's that then? There we go. I think that looks better like that. Um, I might actually just resize it a little bit and just move it. Yeah, that's perfect. Press enter. And then that looks like reasonably good. Now we can change the color of this by going to image at the top, adjustments, and then hue saturation. And then if we drag this around, you see the color changes. Now green is a colour that I find works well a lot, which uh, you'll notice I do use in a lot of my thumbnails because I just think it stands out a lot and it does look very nice. But I'm just going to go for turquoise today because it's a bit different. So I've just moved the um, the hue around a little bit, so you just want to find a colour which you think looks good. Uh, and then you can make it a little bit more strong by changing the saturation or make it like more black and white by going back down but don't do that because you want something that stands out like this and that does stand out a lot I think uh, and I'm actually just gonna change oh that's a very strong green I'm not sure if I like that yeah let's go for it anyway so I'm gonna press OK and there we go now I'm gonna select my original layer and we want him to just stand out a little bit so what I've done now 
is I've right clicked over here and then this has brought up the blending options and there's a bunch of different stuff you can do with this uh, but the one I like to do the best is stroke because uh, this gives m me a slight body see if I change the size we've got like a big thick black border but I want it white so I'm just gonna click on the uh, the color drag over to white because white is uh, it just looks pretty good and you don't want it too thick but you don't want it too thin so you can't see it either so about I'm gonna go for nine nine's a pretty good one and just to add a bit of depth we're gonna add a drop shadow by ticking this top one and we're just gonna move the size up a little bit and also the depth and you see this has added a very very slight border it's it's hardly noticeable but it just it does just add that extra little bit of oomph so I think that looks pretty good like that so what we're gonna do now is get the text in because we just want Hunger Games you can have the Minecraft font the Minecraft text the, uh, the Minecraft logo that's what I'm trying to say there if you want but to be honest I don't think it's necessary because if people see the thumbnail and they see the title of the video that's got Minecraft in it it's not really necessary it just takes up more space so what I've done now is I've ticked the text function and my computer is being very slow which it's not usually like this I think it's because I'm rendering at the same time and the font I like to use is Comics Loud which I downloaded from thefont.com if you want a tutorial on how to download fonts post a comment and maybe I'll do that for next week but all you need to do now is press where you want your text to be and type what you want your text to say so I'm just going to go for Hunger Games this is a very nice font I think uh, and I'm just going to position it like that by using my uh, cursor thing uh, and I'm actually just going to left align it rather than center it just because I think that looks better in the corner now I'm just going to make him a, a little bit bigger so that we can add a bit more depth because if I do this and then I put the text under my character uh, you know it's just added that extra bit of depth so now what I'm going to do is go to my blending options once again and I'm gonna go to stroke and I'm gonna add the same old now actually for this for, for text I like to add a black border so we're gonna use black and we're gonna have a similar size 9 once again and then the color overlay this will change what color your uh, the the layer is so white is what always looks best I think because that just stands out the most but you wanna make it a little bit more uh, two-dimensional because depth is good so I clicked on the bevel and emboss now you can just get the size and you can change it like that and that looks good when it's just one level of text but when it's two levels it makes it a bit too dark so uh, I like to just keep it on something reasonably low just like that because uh, that makes it look 3d but it's not too much it's not too strong we're gonna add another drop shadow to this as well it's just these minor details just add a lot to the thumbnail uh, about that looks good just like that and then I think that looks pretty damn nifty I think I mean it's not the best thumbnail I've made but it's it's not bad so now what I can do is just add some extra little things, some items, um, so let's just get some random crap. Oh, my video is finished rendering, that's good. Uh, what am I doing? So what I'm going to do now is I want to get um, a boat on there, so I'm just going to type into Google, Minecraft boat, uh, in caps lock, it's not really necessary. Um, but we don't want this type of boat, we want the item. So we're going to type in Minecraft boat, item, and hopefully something will come up yeah that is the kind of thing um, I'm gonna go for this one right here because why the hell not And I'm just gonna go on view full image I'm gonna copy it over and then I'm gonna control V paste it in and there it is nope there it is let's get that back in position again our little board is happy to be here so we can make it a bit bigger and we want to get rid of the white border again which is very simple so we just Magic one tool, select, inverse, control C, control V, easy as pie. And there is my board. So I had a bunch of boards in the video, which is why I'm using them. And then I'm just going to move it around and I'm now going to duplicate it by right clicking. I'm going to duplicate layer, press OK, it doesn't matter what you call it. And then I can put another board right here, maybe make it a different size. We might actually get... Um, I'm just going to add a slight shadow to this because the shadows do look good. Uh, I think the default one is fine and then you can actually just go to right click and then copy layer and then paste, la paste layer style on here and then that just adds the exact same style from this layer onto this one. So I'm also going to get some iron ingots um, 
because I had some of them in the video. Uh, I don't really want to spoil what happened in the video. Uh, oh, shout out to Mr. Skitty Kaz who's just subscribed to me. Um, and now I'm just going to do the same again. Control V, there it is. This time it's got a black background, doesn't matter because we can just get rid of it. Hold Shift, select Inverse. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, just pause the video if you need to, which you probably will because I don't know, I'm not very good at these tutorials and things. Uh, there's my iron, delete that, and I'm just going to copy paste layer style so he's got a nice shadow, and I'm going to just put that behind me ever so slightly. Make it a bit smaller, just like that. Paste it in there, um, and I think I'm just going to add another one of those on the other side, right over here. Rotate it around, uh, just like that. Put it there, I think is good. And move that board up. And there we go, that is good enough for me, I think. Not a bad thumbnail, not my best, but you know, it's pretty good. Hopefully it teaches you the basics. Then all you need to do is go to File, Save As, and you need to save it as a JPEG. Uh, and this is just the good font for, this is the good format for YouTube. And then you just call it whatever you want, uh, Boat LOL. Uh, press save and then that is ready. Oh yeah, the uh, options will come up. I just have mine on the highest quality because why the hell not. Press OK and then that is ready to upload to YouTube. And you can save it as a Photoshop file if you want to as well. But I'm not planning on saving this because now it's saved. That's all I need. So there we go guys. Uh, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. There's, um, hopefully you learned some basics and stuff. I'm not very good at these tutorials yet. I haven't been doing them very long. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, give this video a like if it was helpful, and I'll probably do some more of these every Tuesday. So my name's Jack, and I shall see you next time. Bye!